and welcome. You're watching Medically Speaking and I am Anakshi Upreti. Today we'll be talking about a very pertinent issue relating to children and their health. Now, when you hear about children and their health, and especially in these times, I'm sure all of you are thinking I'm going to talk about the so-called impending third wave. But that wave may be impending. The greater danger, which is already here, the vector-borne disease, which we see every year, dengue is back. Hundreds of patients, uh, of course, admitted in various hospitals, most of them children. Now, this time, what we are seeing is the dengue D2 strain, which is unfortunately turning out to be extremely lethal. What's the difference between various strains of dengue? What are the precautions we can take? And how do you recover in case, unfortunately, someone gets dengue? To discuss this and more, I have a panel of experts. I'd like to welcome all of you. I have um, Dr. Ashutosh Biswas. He's, of course, a professor from Ames, also an expert uh, in dengue. Uh, thank you for coming, sir. I have Dr. Romel Tikku. He is the head of internal medicine from Max and Panchil Staket. I also have a Dr. Suranjit Chatterjee. Uh, he's from Apollo. He's the head of internal medicine there. And I also have Dr. Dr. Agrawal, who's just joined us from Fortis, uh, head of internal medicine there. Thank you all for joining us. I'm going to start uh, with you, Dr. Tikku. My first question, I know a lot of viewers uh, may think that in times like these, when everyone is so concerned about COVID, why are we discussing dengue? Yes, there are a number of cases coming up. They come up every year. Yes, there are deaths, unfortunately. They happen every year. But this time, it's different, isn't it, sir? Yes, of course, we are the, in the middle of a pandemic right now and we have to deal with another virus like dengue, which can potentially be lethal in some patients. Now, we've seen so many patients in UP, Firozabad, where so many deaths have happened. Now, dengue, if you talk about dengue, it's a vector-borne disease, mosquito bite calls it. Yes. It is, Egypt is the mosquito. Yeah. There are four strains, which basically means in a lifetime, you can get infected four times. And each strain, once you're infected with it, gives you immunity for life. But subsequently, if you are infected with another strain, there are chances that you can develop severe disease or you can end up getting hospitalized. Now, the problem is the strains. All these four strains, I mean, strain two and strain four are supposed to be very virulent. That strain two is the most dangerous, most virulent. Yeah. And we are dealing with strain two here, dengue virus strain two. In UP, Firozabad, where we are seeing such patients. And it's very virulent. And that is the reason why so many deaths have happened. Now, in the middle of a pandemic, while we're dealing with so many patients who are infected with COVID, though the numbers have gone down, especially in North India, we don't want another headache sitting on, our, sitting on us. So we have to deal with, because dengue, see, most of the dengue patients have mild or asymptomatic disease, 75%. It's only in a few that you get severe dengue. Now, severe dengue, what is the problem? What happens is basically there can be plasma leak, there can be multi-organ failure, there can be bleeding happening. It happens to very few. And it happens to those who don't have access to medical care. And now if it happens, if it strikes in small towns, villages where hygiene, sanitation is an issue, then you end up having such devastating issues. That's what has happened in UP Firozabad. And the problem is we don't have specific treatment for dengue. Yes. There's no antiviral medication. The only thing you have to do is make sure that you're well hydrated. Don't take any painkillers, take paracetamol, and be in touch with your doctors. Fortunately for us, there are tests yeah. which can be detected on day one only. There's a dengue virus NS1 antigen which can detect it on day one. Then there are the serological tests which can detect it later. And yeah. then there's the PCR. Now, PCR is an expensive test, not available everywhere. So early detection, if you uh, detect it early enough, and if you have access to medical care, then you won't have complications. Disease progression related to severe dengue, if it is uh, diagnosed early enough, won't land you in trouble. And when you speak of early diagnosis, sir, and you know, we also, of course, first of all, think of the urban-rural divide, and we'll be discussing that in greater detail. We touched upon it, you touched upon it rather right at the beginning of this answer. Uh, but, you know, Professor, if you could just come in here, sir, as an expert of dengue, sir, help us understand, for the layman, what is the D2 strain, why is it causing brain hemorrhage, and when does the risk or the fatality uh, increase if someone, especially if a child has D2 strain, and I ask this in context to UP especially, because over 100 people have lost their lives, 88 out of them were children. 
Dr. Biswas? Okay, yeah. Yes, uh, uh, it's a very important uh, area to understand that stains. No, there are, first of all, just uh, when a patient, anybody is infected, there are three phases. One is the febrile phase, uh, and next three days is the critical phase, and there is another three days is the recovery phase. Yeah. So a person when infected, he or she passes through the three phases. Now this, uh, these are all symptomatic, and there are as rightly Dr. Romil said that 75% are asymptomatic patients are infected, but they don't need to come to the hospital. They don't need any treatment or any medications. So out of this, one fourth of the people really they need hospitalized hospital care, or maybe five or ten percent of these people go to severe manifestation. So if you talk about this five percent of the total infected people, symptomatic people, they're very less. And then out of this, really type two, there are, as we know, there are four types. And we have been seeing over decades, over 30, 40 years, that then over India, that type two, the serotype is circulating gradually, you know, as an uh, outbreak going on, spreading from one state to another state. So this is what, now this has been seen persistently there, but about other states, really they are not very much present but most important thing is to have this severity as well as the symptomatic burden of the dengue we need to have a more than one circulating serotypes that means that means if any geographical area there was more than one so likely to have so different serotypes causing infection and second time infection likely to have more severe that is what we understand. So it is not necessarily that all the time type two are virulent. The other type can have also if a person is second time infected. So it's very important if somebody is infected already. Yes. And so going to have a second so time. Likely to Dr. Chatterjee, my question to you is, since we're talking about, of course, this uh, lethal strain of dengue and the rising number of cases, what are the treatments for dengue? Far as we know, none. It is all basically is a viral disease and it's basically symptomatic management. So you have to symptomatically manage the patient. Fluid management is very, very important because what people see is the platelet count, which according to me is not that important. You can always transfuse platelets and you can see if there is any bleeding tendency. Very important is that the thickness of the blood, what we call as a PCV or the hematocrit, that is what is very important to monitor. Very, the next most important thing which bothers me is anybody who is in shock, who has a low blood pressure, that bothers me again. All this, all this low platelet is a consequence of all these happening because I'm seeing a lot of patients who have this time and young people, and especially unfortunately, we have had a few patients coming in from Firozabad and all that, where I'm seeing that people are really hemoconcentrated even after giving fluids for a long time. And we, are, we really give a lot of fluids. So I'm seeing them that they are and they, 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 they are basically they have a high hematocrit they are going into uh, shock and the third thing is they are going into liver failure as well so it's, it's basically a multi-pronged attack because none of these systems have a definite treatment so it is all symptomatic treatment under great supervision a few of them are, is dengue we have been treating for the last so many years very few of my patients actually go to the uh, go to the ICU, but this time I have at least in the last five days I've had to shift three patients of mine to the ICU requiring real supervision and the right treatment, right symptomatic treatment. I would say. So the three you say were the children. Sorry, sorry, what is changing? So the three patients who had to be transferred to the ICU, they were chil were the children. Two of them are in the age, one of them was 15 years of age, the other one was 21, the fourth one is about 45 years. I specifically asked you this, sir, uh, Dr. Tikkun, you could take this forward. Why are we seeing dengue affecting children so much more? Help us understand that. Well, children don't have good immunity against infections, especially viral infections. That's one of the main reasons why they're getting affected more. And the fact that children are mostly outdoors playing and don't have enough protection from mosquito bites, I would say that's one of the most important things which leads to infection in children. Because they're playing outside, they're not covered well, they get mosquito bites and that's how it happens. And as I said earlier, the immunity is not so well developed. The problem with children, they're not so forthcoming. So, which, so what, what age group would you say, before I take this forward, what age group of children perhaps is more uh, susceptible, sir? Would it be 
infant to toddler or will it be of course uh, five six plus who rather go out and play I, I say this because we have a lot of patients who keep writing into us well it's actually six and above i would say six to twelve years is the most vulnerable age and we should make sure that they're well covered and when they're in the middle of an uh, epidemic going on we should use all sorts of protection from mosquito bites household protection and take care of the breeding sites it's all about prevention. There's no treatment. As Dr. Chatterjee rightly said, it's all about hydration, maintaining your water fluid intake. And if at any point the disease progresses, which actually happens post the febrile illness, once you had fever for four or five days, after that the fever settles, the patient thinks that he's getting better, but sometimes problems happen post the fever. That's when your platelets fall, suddenly plasma leak happens, fluid accumulates in your abdomen in your lungs and you get respiratory distress bleeding liver failure and that's what we have to take care of because potentially that can be fatal and if untreated undetected mortality can be as high as 20 percent if early diagnosis happens okay. access to medical care is there less than one percent hmm. so early diagnosis i would say is the key and hydration so don't take any really painkiller emphasizing that point of early diagnosis uh, because that is where really the key uh, to managing these cases better lies dr vishwas i think uh, dr charaji made a very interesting point why we are all very focused on the platelet counts because um, you know uh, most of the people i speak to myself included we thought it was really the platelet count you have to see if it goes lower that means your dengue is deteriorating what are the other really factors which one should be wary of or one should monitor uh, when unfortunately if they do or their children get dengue sir yeah really uh, platelet count is not very much important for the management we have seen that if we can wait till 20000 or 10,000, you no know, below that, we don't need to transfuse any platelet unless the patient is okay. And the patient is bleeding, then probably this count is not important, then we need to go. Uh, so this platelet is not only cause for bleeding, there are other so fact many factors, coagulation factors. So in the dengue, you know, we have a coagulopathy. Other factors are also involved, which are responsible for you know, causing bleeding. So bleeding is not really only platelet. There are other so many factors. So we are not. That is only one, one of the important aspects for severity. There are other aspects that the patient goes into shock. So, so shock because of there is a capillary leakage. So the vessels are involved. We call it a vasculopathy, where the internal fluid goes out of the circulation and out of your circulation to the extra vascular compartment so this is the beauty of this disease and after you no know, during recovery phase this fluid sort of go out of drain into the extravascular compartment has come into always comes back into the circulation so this is how the patient again regain the pressure and blood pressure becomes okay so patient is become in the initial stage going to shock and third important aspect that we should look for in the beginning is the organ involvement. The liver involvement is also common and due to shock, the kidney failure is a very important issue. Which is, yes, which is the point which Dr. Chatterjee had also raised. So Dr. Agrawal, uh, taking this forward, um, so would you um, recommend that once someone has recovered, perhaps they should not uh, you know, totally forget about dengue, they should still continue monitoring their condition for a few days? Yeah, that is very important. You see that this time, especially in the dengue fever, we are seeing a lot of lot of uh, liver involvement. The lot of the liver enzymes are raised. Patients are coming with the jaundice, and we are seeing the encephalopathy as well. When most of the patients who recover, like they become afebrile, it is not only the platelet count, count that is important. Sometimes what happens after the patient recovers, there occurs the capillary leak. The patient may go into the hypotensum. As he stands up, he may have decreased yes. blood pressure. They have the capillary leak. The fluid may accumulate in the lungs and the abdomen. He got breathlessness. So it is very important that the patient who has been sick at least should be warned that mm -hmm. even if he feels discharged and he stays at home for a few days, take rest take adequate hydration, and in case he develops any of the symptoms like breathlessness, abdominal distension, giddiness, uh, etc., he should report back one. And other persons who are at home treatment, domiciliary treatment, they should well be well educated about these things, that it is not only the fever, it is not only the platelet count. This is totally misconception in the public that it's just as we get a platelet count done, they get platelet count done every day. But the important things are hematocrit, 
important things are your whether you have got other organ involvement how is your blood pressure these are very important so these of course are of course the other important factors which must be taken into consideration mm-hmm. and of course it's been a rather enlightening session i hope for viewers as well uh, dr strategy you know since you've said that you've treated patients as well we are seeing of course uh, an uptick in the cases about 100 cases in the delhi ncr region as well uh, how do you see it planning out of phasing out rather um, in the coming few days this is a time when we see a large number of uh, dengue cases and how difficult is it for you this time around since of course we are in the middle of a pandemic even though of course fortunately the cases are at an all time low this yes, last year i don't know why but because of the covid cases we hardly we saw very few uh, dengue cases but this time the rains have been uh, uh, the rains have been there they have been waterlogging in the city uh, every the yeah. pothole is filled up with water and dirty water obviously so we have a potential of a dengue epidemic this time again, definitely which we have seen in previous years in delhi and delhi has faced quite a few epidemics and which has uh, created havoc and really bad times in the city so we need this time really need to be careful because of the rains that is still continuing and of the water logging that we are seeing every other day so i think we all as as citizens of the city and the government we all need to be very careful that we don't get into another epidemic of dengue because although covid at this moment in delhi is very uh, here very few cases are there you never know in all other parts of the uh, country the cases have risen the cases have shown a different type of a pattern the western world is seeing a third wave again so there is always a possibility that covid might come back to delhi and that along with dengue can be really bad for the healthcare infrastructure So this is the time really to stem it. Of course, before we get overburdened in case the number of COVID cases also increase. I'm reaching the fag end of the debate. I'm going to take one one quick answer from all of you, starting of course with Dr. Tiku. Uh, you know, we are speaking about dengue, especially now that we're speaking in relation to COVID. Is there a possibility, sir, of people misunderstanding uh, the symptoms of dengue? Since you have focused a lot on early diagnosis, anyone who has fever, cold, cough, uh, the first in- instinct in a person's mind is to get an RT. PCR these days. The result report also takes a few days. What would you suggest to those who have early symptoms of a simple viral fever? The dengue also presents like a flu-like illness, which is the same with COVID or, for that matter, common flu. So symptoms are common to all these febrile illnesses. So it's very difficult in the first three to five days to really diagnose clinically what the patient has, unless he has severe respiratory systems, running nose, cough, cold. So you probably think it's. flu or could be covid if there are a lot of patients at that point of time but in this case right now if we are talking about dengue and there is some covid also coming in so if anyone has high fever headache body ache for two two days at least i would say get tested for to begin with for dengue do a cbc liver function test test for dengue is dengue is negative and if the disease progresses fever is going on you develop respiratory issues cough some sort of breathlessness get tested for covid as well but right now because in delhi at least we don't have too much of covid we yeah. have more of flu and most of those patients are getting better symptomatically it's a self limiting disease in 5 to 7 days they don't need hospitalization and we are not seeing much of covid so our focus should be on diagnosing dengue right now if anyone has typical symptoms high grade fever headache body ache joint pains rash vomiting test for dengue on day 1 There is no need to wait for two, three days. Okay. Test Point one day eight. one. If it's positive, Test at least you know. Test day one, and at least you know it's dengue. You can start your treatment at the earliest. Doctor Biswas, yes. last word to you. Of course, we're speaking in context to COVID, so I'm just going to take it forward. Uh, there is no vaccine for dengue. There is still a vaccine uh, for COVID, isn't it, sir? Doesn't it make, of course, the conversation around dengue uh, even more pertinent and requires people to be even more vigilant? Yeah, definitely, we have a vaccine, but it is not there in India. In, uh, other countries, they have around ten to fifteen countries. They are having the, but uh, but this vaccine is not that very much effective. That's why uh, the government of India is not really confident to use this one. But it is the dengue the dengue vaccines are there uh, in other countries. So so as there is no vaccine for dengue, really we need to be care very careful about dengue. but as we have vaccine for the corona and the pandemic is going on so probably the corona the covid is fading away and the vaccine is already there and and but the but we have been witnessing this dengue for several years decades and decades so this is not really we are not in a position to control and prevent this 
uh, it is very difficult to fight against mosquito so if somebody is suffering the one has to be very careful not to have if anybody is having be careful about their warning sign in, in the initial stage there are few signs that there that, that is we call as a warning sign suppose abdomen pain abdomen and there is uh, uh, vomiting and urination is less and patient is becoming confusing so these are the few warning signs these are the that warning that signs which one must watch out for all right sir uh, dr agrawal please come in here uh, i know we've spoken about of course the early warning signs the importance of early detection uh, talk talk take us through the precautions i know they are known to the to the world but if you could just reiterate them for the benefit of our viewers to make the program more holistic and more informative sir well for the prevention we know one we should avoid water logging nearby our house and uh, place of work like we should not allow the drains to log we should uh, drain out our coolers the water logging should be avoided and wherever the are water bodies the kerosene and other things should be sprinkled such that the eds mosquito do not uh, um, proliferate there yeah do not breed there so that is very important and when you go out you wear full sleeves such that you can avoid because you know this is the daytime mosquito that uh, that bites so we have to wear long sleeves such that we can avoid mosquito bites and we um, try to keep uh, mosquito free as much as possible uh, as much as possible yes considering of course the climate it cannot be 100% avoided but these okay. are the precautions these well known to all we wanted them reiterated of course to uh, bring it back into the public conscience uh, dr chatterjee last word to you uh since you've seen a lot of covid patients yourself i would like to ask you is there a fear amongst these covid patients uh, apologies of these uh, dengue patients of covid as well uh, because you know the one thing which comes to a person's mind even though the cases are low is that if i go to the hospital or have to get hospitalized i may recover from dengue but what if i get covid what what would you like to tell patients like that see we have been telling this earlier also if there is an indication and if there is a need to come to the hospital you should definitely come to the hospital because we have seen several cases who would have survived otherwise in the last year who were not suffering with covid but who had cardiac diseases who had who had a stroke and they were not coming to the hospital and they already eventually actually died because of other diseases rather than covid even if you have covid we know we know reasonably well how to treat it or we know how to control it and not that everybody of covid everybody who has suffers from covid dies but anybody of and see all dengue patients obviously need not be admitted but anybody and everybody who needs hospitalization and treatment hospital should definitely come forward because if covid may not kill you but dengue might if you are in shock or in multi organ failure so my thing would be that if there is a need you have to come to the hospital even if there is an epidemic of covid going on if there is a need obviously if there is all need based and necessity based if it is there you have to come to the hospital whatever you are suffering from well absolutely send the fear cycles to have the early warning signs that they have been of course uh, listed out by all the experts here do visit the nearest hospital that's the advice coming from experts it's been a rather riveting conversation i'd like to thank all of you for joining us and sharing your views on the rising cases of dengue hopefully uh, we are able to uh, get dengue in check as dr chatterjee says before covid cases increase thank you so much for joining i hope it's been a riveting session for the audiences as well do subscribe to our channel and watch this video on youtube as well thank you for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon